In our final array lesson, we're going to look at sorting. Now this is an incredibly useful concept and computers can sort data very, very quickly. So let's get our hands dirty and delve into some code. We have a simple HTML file here, which defines a message element and calls some script, which is here. So what this script does is reference the message element and then it defines an array with a set of random numbers. It then displays those and then it runs the sort method and displays the result. So given these values and running a sort, what do you think the result will be? Pause the video and see if you can work it out for yourself. Okay, so let's run this code in our browser. So there's our original sort order. And if we refresh the page to run the code again, we can see what happens after sorting. Now I will be amazed if you got the correct answer. And if you did get it right, give yourself 100 points. So why has this happened? We have 1, 15, 2, 30, then 9. It's almost just as random as it was before, but it's not. When you run the sort method here, without an argument, it converts every element in your array to a string. It's actually no longer a number. So in this case, 30 comes before 9 because 3 is a lower character than 9 in the standard ASCII character set. Now this is, of course, unlikely what we'll ever need. Now fortunately, what we can do with the sort method is to pass a function which handles out the comparison for us. Now it expects two arguments, A and B. So let's write a sort function now. And we'll have our arguments A and B. Now it expects a number to be returned. Now that number should be greater than zero if A is greater than B. And it should be less than zero, a negative number, if A is less than B. And it should equal zero if A is equal to B. Now, rather than doing a complex if else to handle this return, we can simply do some mathematics and return a minus b. So this will result in a positive number if a is greater than b, a negative number if b is greater than a, and of course 0 if a is equal to b. Now we can pass this function to our sort method. So I'll just copy and paste this code. So we pass the sort low to high to our sort function. And remember, we don't add parenthesis on the end because that would run the function immediately. We're just defining a reference to it. So if we save this, we can run the file again. And now we get the correct result. 1, 2, 9, 15, and 30. So let's just recap what's happened. We've run the sort method on our array and we've passed in this function. And this function is passed two values from our array. We don't know what they are and we really don't care. And we just return a value that's either zero, greater than zero, or less than zero, depending on whether A is greater than B. And it works. Now, of course, we could also sort from high to low using a very similar function. Let's write one. And we'll call it sort high to low. Again, we expect A and B. But in this case, we subtract A from B. Let's copy and paste this code here. And we can do a sort high to low and change our message. And we'll save that file and refresh the page. And again, we get the result we're after. In this case, it's sorting in reverse order. So we get 30, 15, 9, 2, and 1. 
Now, if you recall our lessons on functions, you'll understand that functions are just another value type. So we don't necessarily need to define named functions like this. And this is especially true if we're only going to use them once. So rather than actually passing the name of a function, we can simply define a function in the argument. And you'll see this is a lot shorter because we now don't need this function. And we'll do the same from high to low. And remove this function now. So these are anonymous functions and we're simply passing them as an argument to the sort method. And if we save the file and refresh the page, we get exactly the same result. OK, so I think it's time that you did some coding. If you look in the Working Files Chapter 6 folder, you'll find test.html. And this is identical to the one we've just seen. But it loads test.js, which you'll find in the Scripts folder. Now here we've defined a list of animals. And I want you to write two sets of code to sort this list. First, I want you to sort the animals into alphabetical order from A to Z. And next, I want you to sort the animals by the length of their named string. So in other words, dog, which has three characters, will appear before frog, which has four. Have a go. See if you can get it right and we'll look at the solutions in the next video.